One thing is truly universal, and it has stood the test of time and circumstance to prove that it's something that's just never going to change. It is the law of human nature. It's the universal law that governs the role of men and women in society. Whatever society comes to, whatever humanity becomes, there are some things that were meant to be. And whatever men and women try, eventually, the truth can only be what nature intends for men and women, their reasons for existing, their long-term purpose, and how they live their lives. The numbers are meaningless to modern women. When you read their online concerns about how older guys prefer younger women or simply being alone, you might think they're insane. They mistakenly believe that we are speaking from an ideological perspective, which is obviously not the case. Men are simple beings who merely want your love, adoration, and respect. Women, on the other hand, demand absolutely everything, all the time, from every man. Yet, with all the talk about equality, they don't make the effort themselves. Women want literally everything in a man. An average woman wants a tall, handsome, wealthy, and attractive man. However, she typically fails to work on and improve her inner beauty, her personality, and character. In the end, what is on the inside ultimately manifests on the outside, and most of the time, this results in an entitled and ungrateful person who is self-centered and demands that the man grant her every wish for the rest of his life. When you come to think of it, feminism has almost trapped women in its extremisms while freeing men in the sense that they now know how fragmented women really care about how they want to live their lives. Women are disproportionately represented in undervalued occupations, are familiar with the harsh realities of the job market, and most importantly, find it dreadful to think of growing old. Even though this last statement is quite telling, the majority of women find it difficult to accept it because of their social conditioning. Schools, the media, and the entertainment sector actively urge women to put off getting married and starting a family while concurrently encouraging them to pursue other objectives such as pursuing an education, a career, or even many partners. By the way, the word partners refers to casual flings and one-night stands rather than long-term relationships. Social conditioning is incredibly harmful and potent for women. Modern women who fall for it will go to any lengths to protect the beliefs they hold dear. In actuality, they simply combine it with the information they've received from institutions, important figures, and multinational corporations with little regard for the pleasure of women. I know you guys care about the numbers, even though they don't. So, let's begin. Older women are generally unhappy with their lives. The prize for the unhappiest person goes to single, career-oriented women who are roughly 42 years old. They can earn around $100,000 a year, but they're still not content and satisfied with their lives. By the way, this data was taken from a publication dedicated to women. On the other hand, a married man with a decent job and a nice partner is the happiest. Furthermore, according to the same article, a married man aged 39 with one child, a wife who works part-time, and a household income of between $150,000 and $250,000 is the happiest person. See the difference here. The fact that this woman's magazine validates what we already know about leftover women is really telling, even if the story doesn't take into account single guys making so much money. Women are unhappier than ever as a result of the struggle for women's liberation, particularly in the personal and financial spheres. Modern women are free to express their opinions on the intimacy revolution, prostitution, and their freedom to be stigma-free. Mechtub doesn't even invite this kind of woman into their lives. They simply don't invite any women at all. The paradox of falling female happiness between 1970 and 2005 is an actual phrase that has been used by economists. Women's happiness has substantially decreased. These ladies don't actually know what they're talking about when they discuss patriarchy and male privilege. Men aren't good for nothing, and women can do it all by themselves are just a few of the phrases from the new religion known as wokeism that they used to recite on their early broken recordings. We don't require any men. I am entitled to choose whoever I want to sleep with men are oppressors, etc. 
Modern women who chose a profession in school over getting married are obnoxious, intolerable, and poor dating candidates since they are so predictable with their thinking. They've been given the myth that they can climb the corporate ladders in their 20s, have a successful profession, have several guys hit on them, and finally settle down in their mid-30s, despite the fact that they believe that this helps them have respectable savings and know themselves better. The truth is different, though. Leftover women live financially irresponsible lives for the most part. Women overspend, live paycheck to paycheck, and have so much emotional baggage that their ability to attach as a couple is permanently lost. They turn to antidepressants and other legal drugs like alcohol and cigarettes when they are in their mid-30s and early 40s and have trouble finding a man who truly wants them as a mate. However, this does not imply that men pay them no attention. Some males will thirst for any woman out there, no matter what sort they are. She becomes more manly the more marriages and children she has. If I had to sum up how the remaining women think, I'd say ideology triumphs over biology. They ridicule guys, demonize them, and treat them with total disdain. Here are a few additional facts in case they still need them. When women have over 10 intimate partners, their desire to get married to a man is little more than a last-ditch effort. Paired bonding is virtually impossible, and research indicates that she probably contains DNA from several guys. Let me put it this way. Would you want some other guy's DNA in your child? A person will always be shaped by their family's environment. The woman is likely to be more damaged than a conventional woman raised in a healthy home if the social conditioning is coupled with the absence of a good mother figure or with the presence of a promiscuous and slash or toxic mother. It's like going back in time, and I mean the golden times if you ever come across conventional women. Sadly, they are not very common. Even if they don't behave like it, or don't have the qualities for it, leftover women and modern women as a whole desire to be treated like traditional ladies. They presumably never understood the meaning of the saying, you can't have your cake, and eat it too. Single and older women are not ideal for relationships. Even honorable women are aware of this terrible reality and openly admit that they prefer being correct and domineering to being happy. The remaining women delay having children like imposing their ideals while spreading the gospel of tolerance and freedom, and feel oppressed simply for being female. They rarely acknowledge the fact that being a woman is far more advantageous than being a man. Why? Well, because a beautiful woman is far more dangerous than a handsome man. A woman has multiple people in society to look after her. Men don't. A woman is naturally a source of comfort, pleasure, and warmth. Men aren't. And women are far more persuasive than men, so they can manipulate people easily and have it their way. Modern women did everything they could to capture and have the essence of power they thought would make them happy by working the corporate ladder up until their 40s, but realized a little too late that they had a natural need to nurture families, settle down, have a loving relationship with men, and become good mothers and caregivers. And now that they've been inundated with feminist doctrine, they can't even confess that they should have taken the conventional route and lived in accordance with their feminine nature. Maybe in the coming generations, women will start to prefer playing the traditional gender role and learn how content they can be. All we can do is wait and see. So, women might really rethink their priorities, especially the incoming generations of women who are being told by extreme feminist ideology to live life themselves and build their careers, and not think about family. One thing's for sure, the cycle will repeat, and these women will again feel isolated and unable to find men when they're done climbing those corporate career ladders without having a family. What do you think? Let's discuss this in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.